This is uh, the case of a 63 year old Caucasian male who presents uh, to my office with just some mild pain on lateral palpation in tooth number 15. And uh, his dental history is um, significant for parafunction. His medical history is significant for PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. This tooth is slated to be a terminal abutment of a four-unit bridge. And before the dentist uh, proceeds with the restoration, he wanted me to check the endodontics out and give him the green signal. So uh, this patient said that the root canal had been done quite a few years ago. He wasn't quite sure how long, but he had recently developed some pain on palpation laterally. The periodontal probing depths were not very significant. I decided to take a cone beam CT scan to see if perhaps there was a chance that there was a missed MB2 uh, canal. Otherwise, if you look at the 2D image, uh, the root canal looked fairly optimally done. I didn't uh, see any areas of concern. And the reason for the four unit bridge was very obvious. The edentulous site uh, had completely been pneumatized by the sinus. So let's uh, go to the scan now. And I always like to start off by checking the orthogonal slice. Uh, because it allows me to review the volume just globally all the way from the top of the volume and coming down, looking at the sinuses and coming down to the bottom of the volume, just picking up any incidental findings that might just happen to be there. And once I'm satisfied, I'm not really looking at the region of interest I am looking elsewhere in this volume and then I'll just go over to curved slicing to again get a global view in, in the panoramic mode here. Again what I'm doing is I'm moving the scan from the buckle all the way to the palatal and I'm looking at the premolar region, looking at the region of the sinus and again I'm fairly satisfied that I only need to focus on the region of interest, which is tooth number 15. So then I go into the oblique slice mode because it allows me as an endodontist to align the slices along the long axis of the root that I am looking at or studying in greater detail. If you look at the top left hand corner, you are going to see the axial view, which is the occlusal plane. You can move that from, from all the way from the crown of the tooth and as you go apically you can study the play of shadows. You're seeing the sinuses on either side. Sinuses have pneumatized as we discussed earlier and uh, as you go further apically you now see that we have radiolucencies around the mesiobuccal root and that if you come down to the lower right hand corner you are going to see that same radiolucency along the apex of the mesiobuccal root. Let's stay on that mesiobuccal root. My goal was to first see if there was any chance that we had an MB2 canal here and if you look at the top left hand corner here you can see that the MB1 is eccentrically positioned and certainly there is a suggestion that we may have an MB2 here as well. Uh, I'd like to focus in right there so I'm going to adjust it in such a manner that I can view the mesiobuccal root and as I start to play buccal to lingual you see the MB1 as I start to move palatally you may see that we are picking up an MB2 here as well, which is probably the cause for the persistent radiolucency or apical periodontitis. 
And I also see in this view that we have a focal radiolucency here. Let me then look at this axial slice. Here I can see that the palatal root has a radiolucency. I'd like to examine that a little bit more closely, so I'm going to now focus on the palatal root. And there we pick up. Here, let me again align the slice along the long axis of the palatal root. And just where the post meets the gutta percha, you're seeing a linear radiolucency, which might suggest that perhaps this root is developing a fracture. Remember that the patient has a history of parafunction and a medical history of PTSD. So there's a lot of action in tooth number 15 for this patient. But as I start to move through the scan, I see that this localized radiolucency has now become confluent with that of the focal radiolucency that doesn't bode well for this tooth at all. In addition, when you look at the sagittal slice, you're seeing a slight notch in the palatal root, perhaps some sort of a resorptive process that might have occurred on this palatal root, and which further tells us that the overall prognosis of this tooth is very guarded. So what I determined from this CBCT scan is that not only is this tooth a poor candidate as a terminal abutment, but it has an overall guarded prognosis in and of itself. So I think that taking the CBCT scan has really helped decide the outcome for this tooth and for the final restoration. It has most certainly saved a lot of embarrassment for the general dentist. Had we just had the 2D image at our disposal, we would have seen nothing extraordinary. The symptoms were very mild. We might have given the green signal to the restorative dentist to proceed with the four unit bridge, and we might have ended, we probably would definitely have ended with a failed restoration very, very soon.